All right, let, let's do one more example, and that will, that will put it, us at the end of this section right here, 4.7. Uh, this one's a three-dimensional picture. You're going to have to uh, bear with me a little bit as we try to draw 3D for a moment. Imagine we have an op or we want to make an open box by cutting off the square corners of this square. And then we can fold it up. We can fold these flaps up and make a box like so. Uh, so we're going to make an open box by cutting a square from each corner of a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of metal and then folding up the sides. What side square should we cut off for each corner to produce a box of maximum volume? So let's focus on that for a moment. We want to maximize volume. It's going to be a box when we're nice and done. So that is we get this rectangular prism. And it doesn't have a top, so this is open right here. Um, but what's gonna be the what's gonna be the dimensions of this thing? The volume will equal length times width times height. Now, when we fold the thing up, let, let's say that we cut off x from each corner, so an x by x corner. When you fold this thing upwards, then the height of this box is gonna be the dimension x right there. What about the length and width? Well, the base square is going to be this right here. And if the whole thing was 12 inches, if we cut off X and we cut off X, that'll leave behind 12 minus 2X. And that's going to give us the length of this thing. And it is a square, so it's going to be the same thing right here as well. 12 minus 2X for the other side. And so then our volume will look like 12 minus 2x, 12 minus 2x, and x. Which 12 minus 2x, it does have a factor of 2. You can factor that out. So you get 4 times 6 minus x squared times x. This is our optimizing function. Where was the constraint? Well, the constraint actually came into the into the, the, the metal square itself. It was only 12 inches by 12 inches, and that's how the constraint came into place. We actually had three variables in the original situation. One of them was x. The height was just x, so maybe you think we had three variables. Uh, we had length and width, which we were able to remove and replace in terms of x there. Uh, so I'm since this thing is a squared, I'm going to leave it factored as I take the derivative. We're going to use the product rule this time. We're going to get 4 times 2 times 6 minus x times negative 1. Don't forget the inner derivative times x plus, well, the derivative of x is just 1, so we get 6 minus x squared here. Now let's see. So there is a common factor of 6 minus x here and here. We're going to factor that out. We get 4 times 6 minus x. And then what's left behind is a negative 2x plus 6 minus x, like so. Uh, combining some like terms, we end up with 6 minus 3x. And 6 minus 3 has a common factor of 3 again, so factor that out. So we're going to get 12 times 6 minus x. And then we get 2 minus x. So we're going to find two critical numbers, x equals 6 and x equals 2. So consider the domain of this situation. I'm going to come back to the original picture. So as we fold these things up, clearly the smallest that x could be is 0. But how big could it be? Like if we put all of it into height, what would happen? Uh, it would be like we took this square and cut it up into four squares. That's going to be the limit of how big X can be. And this would be six and six and six and six everywhere. So X equals six is going to be the biggest we can get here. All right, let's scroll back down again. Oh, six was a critical number. How convenient. So as we build our T-chart, we're going to consider X as it ranges from zero to six. And we have a two in the middle, two 
seems very likely to be our maximum volume. If x equals zero, then the volume is zero because it has no height. If x equals six, the volume will also be zero uh, because it has no length or width. Two seems to be very, very helpful right here. If the height is two, then we take 12 minus two, that is 12 minus four, uh, which will be eight. Uh, which would be the length and the width. And so you're going to get eight square, which is 64. Double that, you get 128. This will be 128 cubic uh, inches, isn't it? Like so. And that's going to be our maximum, maximum volume. We want to cut off a two inch square from each corner, fold it with our metal folding machine. And then we're going to this maximum volume of 128 uh, cubic centimeters. So the final answer is to cut a two by two, cut two by two corners. And this will give us the maximum volume. All right. And so that gives us a few more examples of optimization problems for today. I hope this was fun. Uh, optimization never really goes away. I mean, these are some of the most important types of applications of the derivative one can see. Optimization problems are everywhere. Certainly everywhere. We're always trying to do the best with the resources we got. And calculus becomes a critical tool in helping one with those type of problems. Um, if you liked the video today, feel free to leave a comment. If you have any questions, also feel free to comment and ask your questions. I'll be glad to answer them um, as soon as those appear. Um, we will talk about Newton's method next time. Um, in the meanwhile, feel free to subscribe to get more updates about these videos in the future. And I will see you then. Have a good day, everyone.